Ship Shape TV is brought to you by Surehold. Clean and simple. Make sure to subscribe to be notified of the latest Ship Shape TV content. A couple of weeks ago, we went ahead and replaced all of the vinyl on my 32 foot CV. And good deal you made it. Hi, I'm John Graviscus. It's kind of a sad day, but also a happy day for me. Um, I had a three year plan. CV's 2015, it's three years have gone by and now it is time to trade it in, okay? And that's what I like to do is flip the boats every three years so you still get a lot of value. We've replaced all of the vinyl on the boat and where we're at now is in Opelika, Florida. This is the CV service center. And they've removed my wrap. Remember my beautiful wrap? That's removed. And the reason that I put it on from day one is so that this gel coat, and look at the condition of it, okay, in South Florida sun, it's never seen UV, okay? It's been totally protected. And the last thing that we need to kind of do before this boat sells is I want to show the process of replacing the rub rail. You can see I've hit some pilings over the years and we're going to be unveiling a brand new one uh, put out by Taco Marine. It's a co-extruded rub rail. It's supposed to look really, really sharp. A lot of companies are really loving this. And Brian, you're pulling double duty. Turn around and say hello to everybody. Hey, everybody. Ryan Farrell is not only doing some video work uh, uh, today on the program, but you're also going to be teaching us on an outboard engine to do what? Uh, replace a starter motor uh, on that 90 horsepower that's back at the studio. Okay, so you and Ryan Landry are going to be yeah, we're gonna getting be into talking that. it through and doing it. Fantastic. Well, before we can get into anything, you know the drill. We need to work out a little trade-off. We've got to get all of you to spend the next 30 minutes with us, and in exchange, we're going to be letting you in on a whole lot more ways to make your boat ship shape. This episode of Ship Shape TV is brought to you by Surehold Industries, helping you keep your boat clean and simple. Welcome back. You're watching Ship Shape TV, boat improvement made easy. Welcome back. We are in Opelika, Florida today at CV's Service Center, and we're going to show you how to replace rub rail. Mine has been nicked up, it's dinged. It's dirty, it's, it's, it's very challenging to clean down. Very. And um, I want to talk about uh, probably one of the best rub rail installers, okay, in, in South Florida, Alfredo. He's going to be kind of overseeing the project and everything today. And how would he go about removing the, the rub rail from the boat? Uh, what you're going to do to start off with, John, is you're going to uh, move by taking out the insert and removing the screws. Okay. That's going to allow you to remove the rub rail from the boat. Now, um, there, there, there's some adhesive, there's some sealant left there. What would, you, what, what would somebody use to clean that up before you put on the new rubber? Right, you're going to want to use the acetone with a rag and just wipe off all that excess sealant and what's, that residue that's there to give you a nice clean surface. Fantastic. Well, let's take a look. This is a brand new rubber from Taco Marine, guys. And who we have on the program is Daniel Avila. And Daniel is in outside sales for Taco Marine. And, and this is a brand new rub rail for the marine industry, not only for boat builders, but also for do-it-yourselfers. Correct. Okay. Um, tell me a little bit about it and, and how is it different than what I currently have? Sure. So this here, John, is our new uh, co-extruded uh, dual durometer rub rail. Okay. Uh, co-extruded, what does that mean? It's basically we're fusing together two different levels of hardness. Okay, so you have the dark gray, which is your rigid uh, property, and then your, your semi-rigid up in the front. Guys, there are different categories of rub rail. There's rigid, there's semi-rigid, there's flexible, there's metal, like, you know, stainless steel. Correct. And um, so this is co-extruded, and it gives you the benefit of what, because, I mean, if you, if you really look close at my rub rail, I mean, they did a nice job, but you do see, I mean, if you look close, you do see, nah, it's not the cleanest line. Okay, is that because it's a... It's, it's, it's only semi-rigid? That's correct, yes. So the screw is actually getting at the dimple a little bit. It does, right. So the, uh, the rigid part of backing, uh, that's there to aid with the, uh, the, the, the warping that you get with the screws. Oh, really? It's going to so be a much, be a cleaner, much line. cleaner line. Okay, fantastic. Now, Captain Mark Henderson, he just took delivery of a 39 CV, brand new CV. He is with the uh, fishing team Liquid Fire. He's also in the marketing department at Taco. He was showing me pictures of his rub rail, and we're putting on the exact same rub rail on my CV. I really love the insert that he had. Could we show everybody that? Absolutely. So this is our um, 
our flex chrome insert that you've seen before. Uh, it really pairs nicely with the, uh, with the new design. Basically, you're gonna get the stainless look without the uh, added cost and the added um, installation time. Okay, fantastic. Let's take everybody through what Alfredo's going to do to install this. We have a lot of existing holes, okay, uh, from the original rub rail. Correct. How do you go about sealing those? Best thing to do, John, um, get your Beta 5200 and seal over those existing holes and then apply your new rub rail on top of that. Okay, so about every six inches is how, and your holes are not, they're not going to line up with your with your screws. No, trust never. me. Okay, so that's why you want to you want to make it watertight with the 5200. Once it is installed, and I know he's going to have to make some radiuses. It kind of dips down at the back and everything else. Do you do you seal rub rail so that it you know water doesn't get up Ab underneath it? Absolutely, yes. So what, you, what, what do you seal it with? We're going to seal it with traditional uh, marine sealant, clear or white marine sealant. Okay, and you're going to run a bead over the top and on the bottom of the rub rail so that water doesn't get behind it and want to push that rub rail out. Okay, well here's a couple of more pictures of Mark Henderson's boat. Okay, I can't wait to see how my CV turns out. I really think it's going to help sell. If somebody is a do-it-yourselfer, they need to change out their rub rail. Maybe they're a boat builder. Okay, this is, uh, CV's really liking this. I mean, they're, 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 a lot of boats now oh, yeah. are, are going with this new rub rail. Where could they get more information? The best thing to do, John, is uh, visit us on our website, it's talcomarine.com. We have a lot of great information there, uh, as well as installation guides and do-it-yourself tips. Stay bolted. Ship Shape TV will be back in a snap. Wait, don't skip ahead. We've got a free gift for you. Hi, I'm Barry Burhoff, president of Surehold Industries, and we've been the leader in boat care for over half a century. And today, we want to share our free gift with you, Surehold's essential boat care guide and checklist. By clicking this link above, you'll discover comprehensive tips from engine maintenance to effortless washing, ensuring your boat stays ship shape. So don't miss out. Download your free Surehold Maintenance Guide now so we can help you keep your boat clean and simple. Welcome back. You're dialed in to Ship Shape TV, boat improvement that's easy to comprehend. Hey John, last time I was on the program, I was talking to you about some of the products, Surehold products we make that we use outside, inside the house. Guys, who we have back on the program is Tyann Burhoff. And one of the products that you were talking about is this right here. Yep. This is your Buff Magic, and it is an unbelievable variable grit rubbing compound that I love for removing oxidation on the boat. Starts off at 600 grit, breaks in half, breaks in half again. Literally, you can take it from dull oxidized to a perfect mirror finish. One product really saves a lot of time. You're bringing it into the kitchen. Yeah, because I love Buff Magic. Girl, what is, what is going on reason. here with this pot? I know. So I have my stainless steel pots that clearly get really dirty and gra look at that awful over time, okay. you know. And I'm like, oh, honey, I got to get a new pot. And he's like, oh, no, no, you can use our Buff Magic and a little bit of elbow grease with our bronze bowl pan. And I just went like this and scrubbed it off, you know, just a little bit of mint. And look okay, how pretty I'm, it I'm is. I'm going home with the Buff Magic Inside and I'm going the home with the, with the bronze pad. Okay, the bronze <laughs> bowl pad. Okay. You got it. Yeah. You talked about the buckets. You mm -hmm. talked about how not only can you use it for bait or carrying water, or washing the boat, but you also used it as like a, a, a shoe carrier. Yes. You know, like a caddy mm -hmm. type yeah. of thing. We use this to carry a lots of things. So we use it to carry shoes. And even when people come on the boat and you don't want them to wear their shoes on the boat, you can just throw them in the buckets. So they're not tripping over them. Okay, I want to get into the laundry aspect <laughs> because seriously, I mean, a lot of us boaters in Florida yep. will go over to the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. You can only carry so much fresh water on the boat. Right. You're using the bucket for what at the end of the day? So, John, at the end of the day, we have a few bathing suits and things that need to be just rinsed out because if you don't rinse out bathing suits or clothes that you've worn fishing, they get a little stinky. Well, just the salt water, just swimming. Right, okay. yeah. So I use my favorite laundry detergent, and I just put a little bit on the bo in the bucket. And, you know, we, on the bottom of our bucket, um, we have the grate. And so what that does is that when there's sand in the bathing suits and everything, it kind of makes the sand fall through on the bottom. That is brilliant. I fill it up with just a little bit of my favorite laundry soap, and I wash them in the bucket. Okay, how do you dry them? So grab me the handle and I'll show okay. you. So this, this, this is the Surehold handle, uh -huh. guys. Yeah. Okay, and they have an attachment on it. This is the boat hook. Boat hook. So okay. we already have this on the boat, right? And so what I do is I get a drying rack and I just clip the clothes 
onto the drawing rack and I just put it in the rod holder. <laughs> Isn't that great? That is <laughs> I know, cool. I love it. Brilliant. Everybody, okay, what, what, yeah. what's the mask all about? Okay, so another way we use our shirt hole bucket is, is that when we're snorkeling, we go all day and um, basically, especially when we have a lot of people on the boat, there's nowhere to put all the masks, right? right. And so what we've kind of come up with is you do a little bit of tear-free, tiny bit of tear-free shampoo in the bottom of the bucket. Okay. You fill it up with water okay. and you put everybody's mask in there. So, you know, when, so that way when everybody's ready to jump in the water, they know where their mask is, everybody grabs their mask it's and it's already tear free. Up. Exactly. And it's ready to go. That's what divers that's what divers will use professionally uh -huh. yep. to keep their mask clean. Yeah, so it's another purpose. We also like to use the bucket for kind of like a makeshift cooler. <laughs> well, let's think about it. Our ice chests on our boats. Okay, that's kind of heavy to go yep, up to somebody's exactly. house and you know keep the party. Exactly. You know, so going a little on. bit of ice, six pack, whatever. I think so that I think that's multi purpose. Yeah, okay, I love it. So um, fun. I'm very familiar with the speed blade. Mm -hmm. You were sharing how not only can you quickly dry a boat yep. with this. But also, you love it in the house for doing what? Yeah, I love that for the shower. You know, um, when I clean the shower and then I just quick water blade so I don't get those water spots. I do it yeah. in the house. I do it in the boat too. So it's really great. You could use it on windows. Yep. You can use it so many different mm -hmm. places. Okay, what do we have here? Okay, so that is the hose strap that we have. And usually, you know, people use this for like the hose, right? right. Okay, sure. but what right. I do is that sometimes we have more than one thing to carry up on the boat. You know, sometimes for life jackets, especially, we have life jackets for different occasions. I don't store a ton of life jackets. We, we have little sure, kids or something. Sure. I put them on here and I just can carry them right down onto the boat. So I'm not like so lugging a bunch you're using of... That, you're using that yep. strap as a tote as, as a tote. well. Okay. And then you can do an electrical cord or whatever you need to tote down to the boat. You guys, you guys have the coolest videos on, on your website and you have so many tricks and tips and so many different uses for the product from Surehold Industries. Where can we leave people at home? So that's easy, John. Just go to www.surehold.com under Clean and Simple Tips. From the start of your outboard until you return to the dock, make sure your boating experience is always fun and enjoyable by remembering that Maintenance Matters, presented by Yamaha. We're at this year's Fort Lauderdale Boat Show in the Yamaha booth with Rye Landry. And Rye, I know that starters don't go out that often. Correct. Okay, but sometimes they do. Could you walk Brian back in the studio, okay, through how simple it is to replace a starter? Yeah, no problem. It's actually a really, really simple procedure. So now we know Brian has a service man and he's gonna be walking through that. And the procedure basically you're gonna want to disconnect the battery from the motor. Then you're going to disconnect the leads that are actually on the starter and then remove the bolts that hold the starter in place. All right, Rye, I've got the battery cables disconnected and the wire going to the starter disconnected. And one thing that I really want to share with the viewers is a, a couple of tips for troubleshooting. A lot of guys will have an issue where their boat's been sitting and it won't start, but they don't know where to begin. Uh, simple little multimeter can go a long way. First things first is to check proper battery voltage. You want to have 12 and a half volts. If you have it there, then you can follow the battery cable to the starter relay. You want to check and make sure that you have that same voltage at the starter relay. If you do, the next step would be to have somebody turn the key and check the voltage coming out of the relay. You should again have the same voltage that the battery had. If all that's checking out, Chances are you're not having the proper voltage here at the starter and that's going to need to be what's getting replaced. That's exactly what we're going to be doing today. One thing that I like to do personally is I take pictures on my phone as I go. So beforehand I'll get a shot so I could see where everything's routed and hooked up to. That way I have something I could refer back to to ensure that I'm putting the wires in the proper locations and routing them the proper way so they're not going to get hung up on anything. We went ahead and ordered a brand new starter from Yamaha and at this point all that's left is a few bolts that are actually holding the starter on. I need to remove the oil reservoir to get access to one of them. I'm going to remove that, remove the starter, put the new starter on, bolts back in, and then go ahead and connect this power wire coming from the starter relay back to the starter and then reconnect it to my battery and then I'll be in business. One tip that I can give to people is if you're ever out on the water and your boat doesn't start, sometimes on these old starters, the armature on the interior of it can kind of get stuck. So if you have somebody turning the key, you can just tap the starter with the, the back of a screwdriver. Sometimes that'll free it up and you'll be able to get home. And then you know exactly what part you need to replace before your next trip out. All 
right, that wraps it up here. Raj on, anything else you'd like to add? Guys, where you can get these starters from is your local Yamaha dealer. You can get any Yamaha part that you need, and you want to go Yamaha, okay, if you have a Yamaha engine, everything's spec properly. But this is also where you can get the service manual for your particular engine. Again, there's so many boats that are getting sold today used, and oftentimes they don't come with the service manual. There are a lot of things you can do yourself. If you ever get to the point where you feel like you're out of your league, it's over your head, take your motor to your local Yamaha dealer and ride where could somebody find a local Yamaha dealer in their town? You can go and use our dealer locator on YamahaOutboards.com. Do it all with a SureHold telescoping handle. Designed with the easy to use Sherlock quick release system, compatible with over 50 different attachments, transforming it into a deck brush handle, squeegee handle, swivel pad base handle, chamois mop handle, camera handle, floor broom handle, boat hook handle, water blade handle, landing net handle, even a threaded handle for equipment you already own, and more. Fully telescopic for easy storage or adjusting to the perfect length. Each Surehold telescoping handle is proudly made in the USA and is truly the one handle that does it all. Surehold, clean and simple. Welcome back. You're tuned into Shipshape TV, America's favorite boat improvement show. Randy, how much do you think it would cost the owner to replace the vinyl inside this North Side? I would say on a quality boat like this, you're going to spend at least $15,000. You know, I just replaced the vinyl on my three-year-old 32-foot CP. It lasted three years. Well, I keep it on lift. Back wow. in my it's South Florida, okay, a lot of UV. I'm one guy, okay, carrying the weight and, the, and just the awkwardness of a mooring cover It'd be really hard to cover that. So, I, so just like a lot of people, you, you go up and down any one of these waterways, how many boats don't have a cover over top of it and they're absolutely getting destroyed. But there really hasn't been an alternative until you came along. And I want to introduce you to Randy Kent. Randy is the owner of a company called Marine Concepts. Yep. And you've come up with a concept, my friend, to help boat owners like you, like me, in protecting these beautiful, expensive pleasure boats, okay? Um, this is not a mooring cover. This is not a traditional mooring cover. What do you call the product? It's basically a track-assisted boat cover. Okay. So the weight of the cover, which is the biggest nemesis for all of us, right? Sure. And when you get into a, any boat that's 30 foot plus, the cover weighs so much. It takes a couple people. So. This is basically weightless because it's all suspended from the track above the boat. Okay, pan, pan up. Okay, see this center track going all the way from out in front of the bow, yep. all the way back behind those engines. Yep. Okay. You've got fabric that is kind of hung into that track. And, and, and how do we cover the boat? How much of the boat gets covered with, with your, and you're calling it the? One minute boat cover. The fabric, like like how much of the boat does it cover? How far does it, it go covers down? the entire boat all the way down to the chime and then in eight inches. So when you tighten up the rope ratchet, it sucks underneath the boat and creates a seal around it so it's perfectly clean. Okay, so so your gel coat's no longer gonna be oxidizing Correct. in the we're in Florida, okay, in the Florida sun, but it, it happens everywhere. Yeah. Okay. All the vinyl's gonna be protected. We're not gonna have to replace it be every like, couple of years. It'll be like brand new all the time. If you want it to look brand new yep. again. You've got marine electronics up on top of the hard tops. Yep. Um, you've got all kinds of gear that this is gonna protect. What about the engines? Covers motors. The fabric. It's how, a, how, how long might it might it last me? It's got a seven year warranty. Gives any rotting, mold, mildew, or fading. But we've, we've got them out there over 14 years old, no problem. So you guys been around a while? We've been around a while. Does the frame, does the track, does that come with any type of a warranty? Comes with a lifetime warranty on all the track and hardware. Okay, th this is a 39 foot Nortec yep. that we're in right now. What, what's like the biggest boat you've done? Uh, we've done up to a 72 foot sea ray. How small of a boat would it be practical to have a device like this? Uh, we've done jet skis. Usually if they have two jet skis side by side, we make one cover goes over both of them. Really? Yeah. Fantastic. So the cost of vinyl replacement would be, you know, here. Yeah. The cost of a one minute boat cover, what, what are we looking at? A lot less money. Vinyl's more. Yeah. So, so this is an affordable product too? Absolutely. Okay. 
comparison to the price of the boat, absolutely. Does it come in different colors, the fabric? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've got uh, eight or nine different colors, all the popular colors. I think people are going to go crazy. Not, not only, you know, not only on the intercoastal, not only in salt water, brackish water. I see, I see this in lakes. I see this being used all over the country, man. Well, this started off at Lake of the Ozarks, Missouri, again, back in 2004. And I had a 46 foot boat and I was sick and tired of washing it. I mean, it was like a poker run boat. I had a fancy paint job. Oh, hold on. You're saying with one of these covers, you're not going to wash the boat as often. The environmentalists have to have, have to love that. The from what we found out, the municipalities in Florida absolutely love it. You're not putting acids and detergents in the water wakes every every yeah every week because you don't have to wash the boat. Once you rinse the boat off, you cover it up, you're done. Okay, you don't have to wash it again until you're back from next time using. It. You're not getting the boat crushed by UV. Correct. One thing you might not think about a lot, but 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 I get it is pollen. Okay, um, it'll protect the boat from pollen, bird guano. How, how much of this stuff gets ruined by birds coming over and putting droppings oh, I'm, I'm on the boat? Imagine. Spiders? Spy, we have big spider problems. Okay, this, this is huge. If somebody wanted more information, where could we leave them? Uh, just find us on oneminuteboatcover.com. So this is the original rub rail on my 32-foot CV. You can see the, the 5200. And what I really didn't like about the white-on-white -white combination was how hard it was to keep clean. Here's the insert. And um, I mean, a lot of guys will try acetone to kind of clean a rub rail, and that does destroy the UV properties, okay, in it. And we're going with a different type of insert. This is from Taco Marine. This is their stainless steel insert. No fasteners are being shown here. And what Alfredo, Carlos, and Brian have been doing is they cleaned up the rub rail with some mineral spirits. and. Using some CRC lubricant, you can also use a little dish soap and water. You gotta wet the insert in order to get it in, and that's what they're doing right now. Now tomorrow, what they're gonna do is they're gonna caulk the top side and the underside so that everything is watertight. And we've got a lot of people that we need to thank. We first need to thank Ariel, one of the owners out here at CV for arranging this, we, their team, naturally. Uh, Brian did a fabulous job with Rye, teaching us more about starters. We had Ty Burroff on the program and you know the multi-uses with all the stuff around the boats we had uh, rye landry helping us out we had uh, randy kent what a cool boat cover he is making the one minute boat cover just fantastic but most importantly we need to thank everybody at home thanks so much for hanging out with us real close to miami it's hot it's humid but we're out of time i'm john verviscus we'll see you on the next go around i think the color of the insert matches that yamaha engine i don't know if you can hand over that yamaha engine but look at how that ties in to those Yamaha engines. Woo, baby! This episode of ShipShape TV has been brought to you by Surehold. Don't forget to subscribe to be notified of newly uploaded ShipShape TV episodes.